Welcome everybody to Every Nation Muet online service. And if you are here for the first time, I want to say personally, welcome to our service. And I hope really you enjoy this and together with us. Going back and celebrating last week, we had our Leaders Ignite. And I don't know about you, but it definitely empowered me to be an effective leader where I go in my work environment or everywhere where I just function as a person. And I hope that it really empowered you as a leader. And a further on, I want to celebrate two weeks back, we had a discipleship training with Hainu. And what I want to celebrate is the fact that it was not an every nation thing, but it was a kingdom building moment of churches coming together and hearing what God's word is speaking about when it comes to discipling people and helping people to follow Jesus better. Because that what is discipleship in the end. It is just helping people to cultivate their relationship with God. And I just want to celebrate that. It was a powerful moment where God brought new perspectives and we are entrusting it all to God for more to change into a place where more are reached, where people that are lost are being reached. So I just want to celebrate that and, and it's something that we cannot, um, we cannot miss that. So furthermore, um, we're going to go into the service and don't forget that after the service, 10 a.m., we have our Zoom gathering. And I want to encourage you to join, even if you are for the first time here, to join the Zoom gathering and to be part of the family and part of the community. Uh, not just being a visitor. Uh, furthermore, enjoy the service and enjoy the sermon. Thank you, guys. Good morning, friends. This is the time of the service where we are just going to worship together. So why don't you join us? surrounds me Just one word The darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of fear Just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart but believe there's nothing that I can do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that I got can do. Just one word, you heal what's broken inside me. Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes are open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that I got can. It's not a mountain that he can move But praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that I got can do Nothing that I got can do It's not a prison wall that he came through But praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that I got can do. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. 
Let faith arise, let all agree There's no power like the power of Jesus I will believe in greater things There's no power like the power of Jesus Let faith arise, let all agree There's no power like the power of Jesus I will believe for greater things There's no power like the power of Jesus Let faith arise, let all agree There's no power like the power Nothing that I got can do It's not a mountain that He can move But praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that our God can do There's nothing that our God can do It's not a prison wall that can't break through But praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do Search the world, but it could not fill me. A man's empty grief and treasures and feet I never know. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is not satisfied here in you alone. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid To show you my weeping My failures and flaws But you've seen them all Still you call me free Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better Turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You 
turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the This morning we just come and just acknowledge you as the one who breaks the walls. We just acknowledge you as the one who, who brought Jericho's walls down. And we just, if you are just at a place this morning where you feel that there are certain walls in your life that just needs to be broken down, um, just, just trust God in this moment. Just lift up your hands and just ask Him, Lord, Please show me how many times I still need to walk around Jericho or is my time finished? Is the time, has, has the time come for the walls to start breaking down? Oh, we fix our eyes on you The wall breaker walking around this wall. I thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. No, when the night won't last. 
Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in everyone from Corona to Jonah that is the sermon series we're busy with my name is Heine Forster so good to be with you guys this morning uh, what a fantastic book in the Bible is the book of Jonah it's one of those books that you actually read when you were a kid uh, or you heard when you were somewhere in school and a Sunday school teacher was reading this to you telling you the story your auntie your mom your dad this is where you heard the story and you heard the story because it's this fantastic tale of a man that was called by God to go to a different nation. So he's a prophet, not to his own nation, to a different nation. He doesn't want to go. Long story short, a fish swallows him up. He repents, fish spits him out. He goes and he goes to, to these people he's called to go to. They get saved. And that's the, that's the book of Jonah in a, in a nutshell. But here's the thing. It's not just that. 
And what happens to us is when we read this book and when we, or at least when we hear about Jonah, it was the story that I graduated from. You know, like I heard the story before. I don't need to hear it again. Uh, I see the book of Jonah in the Bible. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, cool, the prophet of Jonah. I remember that one. Skip this book. Let's go on to some of the stuff I can't remember or I, or I haven't learned. But you see, Jonah is a very important place in the Bible and a very important place in, the, in our theology and how we how we are called to go to people. And that's for that reason we're doing from Corona to Jonah. So we're in the time of Corona um, and we're probably going to be in this for, for a little while still. What do we do? Is the kingdom of God paused? Are we supposed to sit back and, and relax? Or are we actually called for a time like this? Now you'd hear that in songs and in poetry and in movies, people quoting that saying, you know, the time for greatness is when we get up in, in the mid of, midst of a storm. Now, Corona is one of the, these times. It's a time that, that none of us could have predicted. What is God's call on our lives? And I, and, I, and I believe that we will find that in Jonah. Now, please go watch our first rendition of Jonah where we actually read about the whole fish and the being on the boat and the storm. Um, it's a it's a great read. It's a great sermon, um, and it's a great message from God. And, and I want you guys to please go and go and revisit that. It's about the week before last uh, where we jumped into that one. Today we're going to read from chapter three um, in in Jonah. So may, let me just give a short recap of what has been happening. Now you'll see on that map that I'm going to give you right there is. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, or Nineveh. Uh, now, this is the empire of the Assyrians, and I'll show you that in a moment. But the Nineveh is not too far from where, where Jonah was, but he decided to actually go in the opposite direction, to Tarshish, which is on the, across the Mediterranean Ocean. Um, what's that? 4,000 kilometers away, Jonah decides to escape to. And he gets on this boat, he gets into the Mediterranean Ocean in the middle of nowhere, and there's a storm, this godly storm that uh, arises. All of the people on the boat start freaking out and calling on their gods. And Jonah's in the, ba you know, well, in the basement, in the, what, the hull of the ship, he's sleeping. And there comes the captain, comes to Jonah, he says, listen, what's your story, bro? I mean, all of us are freaking out outside. Come with me. Come and call to your God. Maybe your God knows what's happening. The long and the short is they realize who Jonah is by casting lots. And they ask him, you know, what are we supposed to do? And Jonah tells them, okay, well, yeah, this is my fault. This is God. He's called me to do something. I didn't want to do it. You're going to have to throw me overboard. They throw him overboard. And he's thrown into the ocean. And then in chapter 2, we actually see that he, he says this prayer. Um, and he, in his prayer, in a way, he, he repents. And this fish comes and swallows him up while he's in the ocean. And, and sorry, this, this prayer is actually from inside the fish. And uh, the fish spits him out. It actually says it vomits him out. I mean, look at that picture. How beautiful is that? I really want that to hang over my fireplace one day. Um, I don't know at what point he became naked. I don't know. And I don't actually know where that robe came from that's just randomly coming out of the fish with him. But the point is that Jonah was thrown from this fish because of repentance. What a great picture. And uh, anyway, so what we need to know today as we read uh, chapter 3 is we need to know who the Assyrians were. And I've, I've got some pictures up there for you. The Assyrians, they're these, uh, a nation, uh, actually a ruling nation of the time. Uh, the capital city is called Nineveh, and it is probably the biggest city, uh, the most influential city anyway, uh, of the time. And the Assyrians were actually known for being very bloodthirsty and killing, and uh, the whole idea of taking people from their country, like when you go into the country, you know, and you overthrow them, take them from their country and actually ship them back home, is a part of, a, a part of their war strategy. Um, everyone was afraid of them. Everyone is scared of the Assyrians. They're terrible people. And Jonah is super reluctant to go to them. He doesn't want to go to them. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be there. These people are terrible. And uh, that's who they are. So let's jump into, this is after the fish has vomited out Jonah. 
chapter 3. Let me read with you. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. How beautiful is this? God just, you know, there's always a second chance when it comes to God. Go to the great city of Nineveh and uh, proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed, big word, the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. That's uh, just a way of, of showing repentance, of turning from their evil ways. Verse 6, then Jonah's uh, warning reached the, the king of Nineveh. He rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let them, or let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Verse 10, when God saw that they did all, uh, did uh, what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Right, so there's three things that, that we need to, need to highlight from, from what we see here. All right, obedience, repentance, and grace. Somehow we always get to obedience. I don't know how it happens. It's just like that's one of the things God remind, uh, you know, commands. Obedience, right? So obedience is obviously the number one thing that we jump into. Um, and we see this from Jonah. So what is the obedience God actually asks of Jonah? Look at this city. It says the city of Nineveh, right, is so big that it takes three days to go through it. I mean, this is not like a Mickey Mouse city, like a chill it out. Um, this is big. Right, so think, if I had to walk from Pretoria North to Centurion, it would probably take me a day. If I had to walk from Centurion to Pretoria to Silver Lakes, it would probably take me another day. And from Silver Lakes back to Pretoria North is probably another day. That's the big, it's probably as big as Pretoria. Right? An ancient city that is colossal. It's next to this river. It's massive. It's so big that it's, it's, it's almost unconquerable. Because how would you, what army goes to a city like this and then the army surrounds the city? There's no army that's three days in breadth. There's no army that, that comes into the city. How do you overthrow a city like this? How do you, you know what God does? Is he chooses one man. I don't know if you've heard that. I think it's from Pablo Francisco. One man, one desire. That's what God does. One man. It sounds like a, it's like a blockbuster movie advert, uh, advertisement. So you jump into this idea that there's this one man going into this. That's, that's what stories are made of. Like stories are made of this hero. Every human heart has this craving for salvation, this longing for saving and for being saved. That's, that's why we have all of these movies. That's why we have, you know, this whole action adventure genre anyway it's because it speaks to every human heart i wonder why i wonder why i wonder if that's something god has placed on our hearts he asks jonah to do this he gives him the second chance as you see um, it's almost like god communicates your failures make you useful because he doesn't just do this in journey he keeps on doing this like over and over in the bible God keeps on showing how he gives second chances, how he uses the same people. Realize quickly that this is immediately after he was vomited from the fish. And it's, it's immediately. There's no like 40 days of fasting, you know. They, no, it's, it's immediate. 
And what that tells me is like, it's, it's mission isn't necessarily for the well-rested. Going out, evangelism mission, what God calls you to isn't, isn't because you've got the time, because you got the money, because you were born into the right family. It's nothing to do with that. God calls you. God calls Jonah. Jonah turns his face from God. That first, as we saw two weeks ago, he actually turned his, fa- he turned his face from the presence of God. He wasn't just running away from the mission. He was running away from God himself. Runs away. God calls him, you know, God force, you know, forcefully lets him relent or lets him repent. Spewed onto this beach. God's like, okay, are you ready for round two? And he's like, okay, fine. You know, three days in a fish. That was my breaking point. I'm ready. Let's go round two. I'm going to do what you say. Interesting how Jesus also has an opinion about this book. We read in Matthew 12. I don't have it on screen for you. but um, Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, Jesus answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So these guys are asking Jesus. I'm paraphrasing. They're saying, bro, just give us a miracle. Like honestly, just show us. Don't stop talking. Stop giving us stories. Just give us a miracle and just... Jesus says, no, 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 no. Look at Jonah. That's the miracle I'll show you. Even Jesus sacrifices and obeys unto death. That's the obedience that's asked of us. Are we obeying? God asks us over and over. Maybe this is even a second time God is asking you. Are you obeying? Are you being obedient and listening to God? All right. Second word, repentance. Repentance means to turn. So when I'm when I'm busy driving in this direction, right, I I need to turn into this direction. You see, repentance doesn't mean I just uh, change my behavior a little, or repentance doesn't mean I I just kind of modify what I'm doing. Repentance means I stop with what I'm doing. I turn, not I pause, not I, I I hang around and wait. Now, repentance talks about a turning, a 180 degree turn. That's what repentance is. And, and what I want you guys to see here is that, that many times when repentance is asked, we, it's this, this message, um, it's the good news is the gospel that's being preached. And, and many times when we preach the gospel, which is the good news, we str- we struggle to give the bad news. We don't want to say the bad news. We just want to say the good news. God loves you. He adores you. He wants to be with you and therefore repent. Here's the part that we sometimes miss. You are so evil, so wicked, so flawed, that there's no way for you to make it in this life if you do not seek a savior. For the wages of your sin is death. Full stop. Good news is the gift of God is eternal life for those that repent. That, you know, for, for God so loves the world. He gave his only son. But for those that believe. So repentance is big. So God asks Jonah to go to this pe- these people. Remember now, the Assyrians are not Jews. Right? So just the fact that the king of the Assyrians... Repent is already something amazing. It's like it will never happen. Imagine God calls you to go to, I don't know, uh, a city like Johannesburg and go and let all of the people repent. I mean, would that be a tall order? Are the people of Johannesburg known to, you know, know Jesus? What if God calls you to a city like 
I can't even remember what's the capital of North Korea. But imagine he calls you to go to the country of North Korea and he wants you to go tell those people to repent. Imagine that. Imagine that tall order. None of those people, those people don't know God. That is the people of Nineveh. So for that king to have repented and asked all of his people to repent, it must have been like the best news ever, like the gospel, like you've never seen it before. But then we read, here here, here are literally the words that Jonah was preaching. 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Full stop. How's that for, for preaching for preaching God? Now you you guys are gonna die. That's what's gonna happen. You're gonna die. So turn, stop doing what you're doing, otherwise you're gonna die. Otherwise, all of this is gonna the city will be overthrown. And the king hears this and he's like, okay, well, we need to repent of what we turn from what we're doing. Stop. I call a fast. No one is eating. You know, repent, uh, uh, put on sackcloth, show God that you are turning from, you are relenting from your evil ways. And maybe, who knows, maybe God will see our repentance. Look at Jonah's preaching. What a lousy attempt. But God uses it. God uses it and he makes a city turn and repent. Here's maybe just a side note. A city is important when we want to reach the go- reach people and preach the gospel. City. Because the city is where things change. Where we change a culture is in a city. That's why we say we want to go to cities and to campuses. And that's why we do that. And we want to be on campus because that's where uh, you know culture changes. That's where the future leaders are. That's where the next generation will be. Um, that's why we do that in cities, because that's where we find our campuses. That's where we find. Um, that's how the Roman Empire was overthrown by the Christians in the end. How do a bunch of fishermen, beggars, blind street dwellers overthrow the Roman Empire? By preaching in the cities. That's where Paul went. That's where Timothy went. That's where Barnabas went. That's where Peter went, to the cities. That's where Jonah went, to a city. If you actually take the word uh, pagan, pagan means, uh, it comes from the word piganus, which comes, which means the countrymen. So everyone in the countryside were all the pagans and the cities were the ones that were being, um, that came to salvation. The entire nation of the Assyrians were turning because of The influence Jonah had on the city. A whole city repents. So the only way, my friend, that you can become like Jesus or become more like Jesus is if you repent. See, repentance is more than just modifying my behavior, as I said. Repentance is turning to God. To God. Away from where I am. Turning 180 degrees towards God. It's not just an emotional feeling. It's not just something I decide. There's an action that happens. The last word that I want to show you is grace. And we always come back to grace also. How can we not? Grace is something uh, that we receive even if we don't deserve it. We do not deserve grace. For a lifetime, generational Assyrian evil. They're evil. They don't deserve, but God gives them grace because of their repentance, because of the turning, because of his love, his love for all people. Check out verse 10 again. When God saw that they did not or did or what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. You know what I hear when I hear that? I hear Jesus. I hear the cross. That's what I hear. Do not be the reason why people cannot repent. Go where God calls you to go. But here's what's important to understand. Is if you are calling people to repent, you need to repent. You are called to repentance. You're not called to 
have more and more knowledge. You're called to repent. When we encounter truth, all we can do is repent. So if God calls you to people to go tell them the good news, to go tell them about God, to go tell them the bad news before the good news, so that they know what they're repenting from. Remember that we're doing this from repenting hearts. Are we perfect? No, we're not. Is there almost daily sin in my life? Yes, there is. I say almost. It's not almost. Is there daily sin in my life? Yes, there is. There is. I need to repent. So I'm not teaching repentance because I'm not repenting. No, I have an understanding and I need to repent constantly. I need to repent. I need to come to God and turn from my evil ways. Sometimes, sometimes we think that we are, that we are, you know, somehow slaves to sin. But we are lovers of sin. That's why we keep on running into it. Now, if Jonah 3 says anything, it says God gives me extra chances over and over and over because he wants us to be obedient. He asks of us repentance like this king repented. And he will always give us grace, always give us grace in Jesus and the blood of Jesus because of the payment that Jesus made on the cross. You and I can receive grace. And I end with that this morning. Thank you, Lord, just for this word. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you can solidify this word in us this morning. And Lord, I pray for each and every person listening to this to be impacted on the inside, not just by the emotions, but by a heart's conviction. If it means that they need to go, let them go. If it means that they need to stop and abide, draw close to you, then that's what, that's what you ask of them. I pray this in your mighty name, that your will be done. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, friends. And that's it for this morning and, and this rendition of From Corona to Jonah. We, next week, we're going to talk about um, chapter 4, which is probably the chapter you read and you just look at that chapter and it's like, what? what? Why is this happening? What, what happened here? It ends so abruptly, um, but you'll see that there's some good stuff that God wants to show us in this chapter as well. And just our reluctance to go and what is the deeper idol, um, why we don't want to go and why Jonah didn't want to go. Also, I want to invite you to our Zoom meeting right now at 10 o'clock. We're going to go deeper. I'm going to, as always, just show you some more maps and show you some more cool things and how you can actually read the scripture in more detail. Um, and then tonight we are praying on the mountain, as always, uh, from 5 o'clock. Please come and join us and uh, anyone's invited. All right. See you guys. Be blessed.